Well, hello. I'm out here at the site of uh, some of the work that's being done on Southern Delivery System at Pueblo Reservoir. And as you're all probably aware, Southern Delivery has been a project that we as a utility and we as a community have been working on for a number of years, really going back to 1996 when it was first identified in our water master plan as the means to bring that next major increment of water to Colorado Springs. And I'm really excited to be able to be standing here today and see construction work going on behind me. And really, as, as I'm speaking to you today, there are six different work packages that are actually being worked at, worked on in several locations to build pipelines and to build various facilities for Southern Delivery. This is the culmination of a huge amount of work by a large number of people. Many city councils have been involved in the approval process and certainly the authorization process for Southern Delivery. Lots of staff members, almost too many to be able to recognize here, but I did want to take a moment to just thank uh, Gary Bostrom, who really was the individual that took the ball in the early 2000s and ran with it and then handed that ball off to John Fidel and just a very, very good team that's working it today. We are really excited about where we're at today. Uh, I know of no other community that's been able to build a pipeline like this in the last 20 or 30 years in the western United States. It's no small task in terms of all the permits and all the challenges that we've faced over the many, many years. But what I'm so excited about is that our team has demonstrated tremendous perseverance, tremendous can-do attitude, tremendous ability to stick with things and see them through. And that's why we're here experiencing the success we're experiencing right now. By the end of next year, that's 2012, we're going to have 28 miles of raw water pipeline in the ground, which is another amazing thing when you think about it. We're employing a whole host of various contractors right now. We're seeing prices and costs come in better than we could have even anticipated. So there's an awful lot to be very excited about in terms of this major project. And we're still ahead of schedule and under budget to be able to deliver water to Colorado Springs by 2016. Okay, I'm out here now with Dan Higgins, who's the Deputy Pro Program Manager for Construction for Southern Delivery. And I'm, Dan, I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what's going on right behind us here. Happy to. We are at the side of the Pueblo Dam connection and this is really the initial point for SDS. This is where the source water is introduced into the entire SDS system and behind me you'll see uh, some work underway. We're actually making a new connection to the Pueblo Dam and it allows us to control the flow of water from the reservoir into the SDS facilities. We have a contractor, ASI, performing the work on the dam connection, and they're actually installing a stainless steel liner uh, up inside of an existing tunnel in the dam right now. And that uh, liner will lead into a valve facility, and the valves are on site, about a million dollars worth of uh, valves that were manufactured this past year that have been delivered, ready for installation the next couple of months. And what that does is it actually enables us to take a pipeline or to take water from this outlet facility into the SDS pipeline and the construction of that facility actually enables us to also consider a hydro facility uh, further downstream from where I'm standing. But at the end of the day, this is the initial part of SDS and all the water that's going to flow through that for the project, about 96 million gallons a day through this section, will start flowing from right here. Dan, um, some people have said that Southern Delivery is really about banning Lewis Ranch and that if there isn't a need, say banning Lewis Ranch doesn't develop, we don't really need Southern Delivery. Could you talk about that for a minute? Happy to. Uh, we, we get questions like that fairly often about the banning Lewis Ranch uh, issues and whether or not the fact that there are some changes in the banning Lewis Ranch development plans and what the impacts are to SDS and the reality is SDS is independent of banning Lewis. Uh, the purpose and need statement for the environmental impact studies that were completed for the project really highlight the need 
to have reliability in our system, redundancy, and to also, we need to, perf we need to be able to manage our water rights, which SDS enables us to do. And then there is an issue about managing growth and being able to, to adequately supply water for the growth that takes place, but most of that growth, or much of it, is actually from uh, customers that are already in place and has nothing to do with Panning Lewis Ranch. Thanks, Dan. Pueblo West now and we're in the alignment, the portion of the project that's called S2. And Dan, we've got some activity going on behind us right now. What is that? We do. Right now we have Garney Construction performing some rock trenching and in this area in Pueblo West there's actually quite a bit of rock near the surface and so to make the pipeline installation easier we've got two rock trenchers on this job preparing the right of way for when the pipe deliveries begin in mid-December and we start pipe installation later, later next month. Now there's something special isn't there that we do with the pipe in the way we either bed it or secure it or something, what is that? Absolutely, on this particular pipeline what we're doing is we're installing what's called consolidated low strength material and it's a form, it's basically a weak concrete and that makes a fantastic bedding for the pipe, it makes yeah. it stay in place and it gives it fantastic support. Thanks. We're in El Paso County now, just a little bit south of Fountain and East, and we're in a segment of the pipeline which is called the Combo Package, and this was actually the first segment of raw water pipeline that was installed, and there's been a lot of progress that's been made in this particular area. I can't help but think back to the 2002-2003 time frame when we first started really talking about next steps in terms of building Southern Delivery. And I remember being with Keith Riley as he was explaining to me the ins and outs of the EIS process and what we need to do with the Bureau of Reclamation and what a 1041 permit was. And that sort of launched almost a five-year effort to get to the place where we actually saw this project being permitted. And back when we started, there were really very few people that said we could even build it. There were very few people that were optimistic that we'd ever be able to get it permitted. And here we are today with construction going on behind us. And so I had some questions, Dan, on this specific construction. I understand there's a special way that they're actually welding this pipe together. That's right. This is a nine mile section of pipeline, the two uh, work packages together, and it's 66 inch diameter welded steel. And we have the first, we have an opportunity now for the first time to do what's called weld after backfill. And what that means is we actually will have the trench uh, basically excavated as you see behind me and the pipe is then placed into the ground and placed together and then covered up. And after the pipe is covered up, the welders go inside of the pipe and they weld on the inside of the pipe only. And so that's how we come up with this term, weld after backfill. And what that does, it enables us to make a really great and efficient installation practice and it keeps the cost of the project down. Tell me a little bit about this bucket. It's a very strange shape for a, a bucket on a backhoe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on this work package, we actually have HCP Constructors as the contractor here. And uh, it, what they've done is basically had a custom uh, bucket manufactured for their excavator so that the shape of the ditch is actually made with the excavator in uh, the fewest number of scoops as possible, if you will. And so it actually makes the shape. And uh, you may be able to see it in the background, but it makes a nice triangle shape and it's uh, much easier to install the pipe because of that. So Southern Delivery, $880 million. That's the total cost, including remediation and work on Fountain Creek uh, at, at the end of the project. That includes also the cost for our partners, and our partners are who on this project? We have uh, Pueblo West Metro District as a partner, and they take water. Uh, they're participating in the project only down near the reservoir, but then we also have the City of Fountain and uh, the Security Water District. Thanks.